In the UK, we use electricity all the time. For computers, playstations, washing machines, we need energy. And we need to turn that energy into electricity to power all of our equipment. Now, how do we get hold of that energy? Well, this is one example of wind farm. But what we're going to be looking at now is the advantages and the disadvantages to the different ways in which we can harness energy from nature to turn it into electricity. I'm standing underneath a wind turbine in Carnot, Wales, and I'm here to meet Tanya from National Wind Power. She's going to tell me more about these huge machines. A wind turbine is a three-bladed machine which is powered by the wind, uh, which moves the generator, which produces electricity. A wind farm is just a group of wind turbines. Sometimes a small number of wind turbines is called a wind cluster. The key advantages of wind farms are that it produces electricity without causing any pollution. Wind is a renewable energy which means that it will never run out. We have an enormous wind energy resource in Britain, both on land and out at sea, and it's free. And they don't leave any permanent imprint. When you build a wind turbine, you put down a little concrete pad and then you mount the wind turbine on top of that. When you take them away at the end of their 25-year lifetime, you might replace them, but you might not. And if you don't, all you've got left is the concrete pad. The key disadvantages of wind farms are that they're very expensive. These machines today could cost a million pounds each. Um, they, some people think that they're ugly. On some days, the wind doesn't blow. On these days, we have to rely on energy produced from other sources and they can produce some noise. One of the things that people say frequently is that wind, mill, wind power is very noisy. Now, this is, I would say this is actually just not true. Large wind turbines do make a noise. They're large pieces of machinery and they make a certain amount of noise if you choose to go near enough them to hear them. Now, most of them are quite a long way away from where anybody lives and they don't build them right next to houses for exactly that reason, that that would make a bit of a noise. Um, but, but other ways of generating power make much more noise. They do kill the occasional bird, but they don't kill nearly as many birds as the, bir the roads and all sorts of other things in the countryside. Uh, it's a very small number, in fact, and climate change will kill birds. Of course, wind turbines only generate when the wind's blowing, but around here, in the sort of windy places you put them, it, the wind is blowing most of the time, more in some times than others. Also, if you look at the average of what they will produce, they produce much more in the winter, and that's when we use much more electricity, because everybody's staying in their houses for longer, their lights are on longer, they're watching telly more, and all those sorts of things. So it matches very well with our energy consumption. Wind power is just one type of renewable energy. I'm driving to Dolgarog now in North Wales to have a look at another type of renewable energy, hydroelectric power. I've come to Dulgarog in Wales to meet John, who's going to tell me a bit more about HEP power. We bring water together from an area we call our catchment area, where we gather our water, we catch it, and we bring it into some reservoirs. The water is then brought down from the reservoirs in large steel pipes, which come down the hillside to bring the water in, down into the power station. Water is then taken into the powerhouse building and into the individual turbines. When the water has turned the turbine to turn the generator to make the electricity, the water is then discharged into an underground canal that takes the water out to the river and then out to sea. Hydroelectric power um, comes from the rain. So the rain falls on the hills, the water collects in reservoirs, and then we run the water down through pipes and it turns turbines uh, to generate electricity. The advantages are that it's very cheap and it's an easy form of energy to store because you just keep the water in the reservoir until you need it. It is a renewable energy source. As long as it keeps on raining and we get water into the reservoirs, then we can make electricity with it. It's a very clean type of electricity. There are no emissions that, at all that come from the power station and we don't change the water at all. All we do is move it from one point to another, generating electricity with it on the way. The snag for us in Britain is that uh, we just don't have enough room to build a lot more hydroelectric schemes. We could build a bit more and we could use a lot more small ones. There are not enough locations throughout the country to be able to generate all our electricity with hydropower. 
Also, not everybody wants to have large reservoirs. I've come to Didcot in Oxfordshire to be talking with Val Cross, who's going to explain to me a bit more about how coal fired power stations work, some of the advantages and disadvantages. A coal fired power station is a power station that burns coal to produce electricity. At the moment, we're standing at Didcot A power station. Didcot A can produce 2,000 megawatts of electricity, and that's enough electricity to supply the homes of 10 cities the size of Oxford. The cost of building Didcot A power station in the 1960s was £120 million. If you, were to buy, if you were to build a similar power station today, it would cost you about £1.2 billion. The advantages of a coal-fired power station is that you can produce a lot of electricity in one place fairly cheaply. The, the disadvantages of a, a big coal-fired power station, the you know, gases that go out to the atmosphere, which are carbon dioxide and sulphur dioxide, which contribute to global warming and acid rain. 